Hey guys, good morning. Chris, it's January the 28th. It's a little after 7 a.m. And my wife and one of my sons and I are about to crawl in the truck and drive up to Maryland this morning. Uh, we're gonna go meet up with our son in the Air Force and have some lunch. But before we do that, uh, you may notice that I have my trailer hooked up and that's because I'm going to get an implement. Attachment. Implement. You know what I mean. Okay guys, I'm back from my little mission. Uh, I'm gonna turn the camera around. I'll show you what I got. All right, what I have here is a Woods Brush Bull 60. 60 inch uh, rotary cutter, bush hog. Uh, and this thing is in, it's got a little bit of surface rust on it, but other than just a few minor dents, this thing is in great shape. And I think I got a really good deal on it, uh, but there's a reason that I got a great deal on it. And that reason is right here. Yeah, not supposed to do that, but that's okay. I have a plan. Thank you, cameraman. You are welcome. Son number two. Gotta get back in time. I'm gonna interrupt things a little bit here. I've come back to the future to talk to you about this brush bull. Now, you've probably just seen me unload it from the trailer and bring it up here in the driveway. Well, this is several weeks later and it's finished and it's ready to use. Uh, this was just gonna be a video about me showing you my new brush hog, but I realized throughout this process that I had to make a lot of decisions and I think it's pretty typical of any time you buy a used piece of equipment. If you buy something new, basically you're buying peace of mind. You know the history, theoretically you're not gonna have a lot of service right up front, but you pay more for that. Like many of us, if you buy something used, there's a big question mark as far as the history and whether or not it's been abused and what the life, life expectation might be of something like that. You just don't know. Uh, and that's sort of a risk reward deal we make with ourselves. Uh, if you're handy and you can repair things yourself, uh, you might get a really good deal uh, or you might get left and hung out to dry. So that's kind of what this is about. 
So I thought I would just sort of document my whole journey about this Brush Bull 60. Uh, and at the end of this video, maybe you can tell me whether you think I got a good deal or I didn't. I'm going to tell you every dollar I spent, uh, and we'll go from there. First off, I can tell you that the current version of the Woods Brush Bull 60 sells for right around $3,500. Now, the advertised price on this Brush Bull was $450. That's ridiculously cheap compared to anything that I looked at online. Uh, I don't know what it's like in your part of the world, but around here, you're not going to buy anything that you really want. Uh, much below a starting point of seven or eight hundred dollars. Uh, I looked a long time and I didn't see anything below that price point that I had any interest in and quite frankly even at that seven eight hundred dollar range there was a lot of really rough used equipment a lot of rust repainting things bent all up uh, clearly repaired metal uh, it was kind of frightening so why was this so cheap? Well I think I showed you uh, that the gearbox and it was advertised with a gearbox that either needed repair or replacement. And so when I saw the ad for this brush bull, I ignored it. I saw that it needed work and I just skipped right past it. Uh, and I ignored it for a couple of weeks. Uh, but as I kept looking, I wasn't finding anything. And I kept coming back to this ad and seeing the pictures and it, it looked really good. So I made a call to my man Eugene at uh, Huber of Ashland, which is my dealer. And I asked about uh, rebuild kits or gearboxes. And uh, they actually had a gearbox in stock. So let's talk about what I have in it right now at this point in the video. Uh, as I said, $3,500 roughly for a new one. Advertised price for this was $450. I negotiated with the seller down to $400. Now, this is a Woods, which is, in my mind, a quality product. There are heavy-duty and lesser quality uh, brush hogs out there, and I think bush hog and Woods, um, everything attachments, and a number of others, don't mean to leave anybody out, build really established quality pieces, and this is one. This has 10-gauge steel. Uh, the original gearbox had a five-year warranty. Uh, they say it will cut brush up to two inches in diameter, and so quality piece of equipment. $400 for the unit as it sat. The new gearbox was $500. That is a brand new OEM gearbox from my Kubota dealer. So I have right now $900 in this. So that gets me a heavy duty brush hog with a zero hour brand new gearbox. Now all of this eventually comes down to value and I think that's really good value. But the story doesn't end there. Like many people, you get into things and you realize there's more you may have to do. So we're going to talk about that. First of all, I have a brand new gearbox. That's going to take a little over a quart of oil. So there's 10 more dollars there. But I'm going to throw a curve into this right now. Now, this isn't proper accounting, and I know it. But it's my accounting, so you're just going to have to go along with me on this. When I do road work at the river, I am paid a little bit. It's not a lot, but it helps cover my uh, diesel cost and maybe filters and a little bit for my time. Uh, I don't ever spend that money. I just take it. It goes straight into an account, and that's my tractor play money. So if I'm going to add rear hydraulic remotes or a rear hydraulic cylinder, the money comes out of there. And as it happens, literally the day before I went to pick this thing up, I received a check in the mail from the Overlook Association for $450. Now, that's free money to me, and as far as I'm concerned, that was a brush hog coupon. So I am now going to apply that coupon to this brush hog, which I have notes, now puts me at $460 for a heavy duty 10 gauge brush hog with a zero hour gearbox. But we're not done. Um, my main project is going to be the gearbox. Um, I have the uh, stump jumper and the blades off as one unit. Uh, these, which are all across the internet, a real pain in the ass to take off. Well, that's the truth for me as well. So I'm going to address that 
after I do this. Hopefully I'm going to be able to get these things off without too much trouble. Well guys, I probably should have filmed this after all. Uh, the gearbox switch went uh, pretty straightforward. Latest update, I've got one blade off. This one is stuck. Uh, I borrowed my neighbor's impact wrench because I think mine is just not hitting like it should. Time for a new one, I think. Uh, which was successful, but then I ran out of map gas. And uh, so I'm going to need to go get some more of that, I think, certainly before I'm going to break this one free. Um, I went outside and I just took a little soap and water and just cleaned all the age off of the thing. And uh, again, I just continued to be very happy with, um, with what I've got here. Um, except for, you know, just a few tiny little dents down here at the bottom, which, you know, you certainly would expect. This thing is probably a 2005 or 6 model. I mean, this thing is just arrow straight. Everything looks good. Um, I've got the new gearbox on there. And so, as I said, my next step is going to be to rearrange this. Because uh, after having hooked this up with just the regular three-point arms, uh, yeah, I don't want to have to do that again. So basically what will happen is, uh, let's see, this bolt will come out and then these supports will attach back to this piece here, but uh, these arms will then move forward and attach here. There'll be a bolt with another spacer in there uh, and the whole thing will drop down to the second hole instead of the top. Uh, and that's according to the manual. Well, guys, looks like they weren't kidding. So, I have my new brush hog with its new gearbox, and I'm excited. I can really put it into use right now. But, you know what? I don't want to damage this new gearbox. And if I've invested this time and money to get it this far, it makes sense to do something about these. Now, initially, I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to use the blades that came on it. I mean, they're not bent up, but they are clearly worn. And I thought, you know what, they're probably not balanced. And so I'm going to order a new set of blades. And that's what I did. Uh, I found out later that these things are worn on these corners almost an inch. And Woods recommends replacing them when they've worn down a half an inch. Um, these things should come straight out from here all the way. So this blade comes up to here. So new blades. Set of blades, $130. So with the blades, that brings me to, if my math is right, $590. Still, I'm thinking about value. $590 for a heavy duty brush hog, new gearbox, now new balance blades. I'm in the money as far as I'm concerned. Now, again, I talked about having to make decisions. This is one of those times. If you read the manual, or if you listen to Mike at AskTractorMike.com, or uh, if I trust my technicians and salesmen up at the Kubota dealer and a bunch of other people online, they will all tell you, if you replace your rotary cutter blades, you should also replace blade pins. These are the nightmarish bolts that hold the blades onto the crossbar and the brush cutter. They are notorious uh, as far as their difficulty in getting off once they've been on there a long time. And that was true with me. Now, these to me look like they're in great shape. Uh, there's a big, they're called pins, but it's a big bolt, it's threaded. There's a shoulder that the blade rides on, and there is a keyway, a key here that fits into a keyway. Great big giant lock washer. So I thought, you know what, I could probably reuse these, but I know me. and. I'm willing to pay a little extra for peace of mind, and then I'll never have to think about it again. So, some of you may disagree, but these things are $30 a piece, $60, so I bought a set of the blade pins as well. So that brings me $650 total. And that should have been it, but there's more. Okay guys, it's Saturday morning. A week has passed since I picked this uh, brush hog up. I'm working on it now to put it back together. Uh, got all my parts. Uh, I'm about to put oil in the gearbox now and pretty soon I'm going to test it for the first time. Woohoo!
Okay, uh, you probably just saw a little time lapse there of me getting the stump jumper and the blades and everything back on underneath. So, I'm um, in a really good place with this thing so far. Uh, I think you can probably hear my neighbor banging around in the background, maybe. Uh, at this point, all I've got to do really is get the shaft on and test it out. This is the PTO shaft that came on my brush bowl. And you will notice that there is no protective guard over this PTO shaft. Now, I know a lot of people scoff at those guards and they just tear them off and throw them away. And that's perfectly fine if that's what you want to do. That's your business. Uh, my personal belief is that no farmer ever ripped his arm off on purpose. And it's just that simple moment of inattention uh, or distraction that can make things go south in a big hurry. I certainly know how I am. I'm easily distracted. They didn't have ADD when I was a kid, but I'm sure if they did, they'd have said I had it. So I wanted a guard for this PTO shaft. To determine the size PTO guard you need, uh, you need a little bit of information. A, you need to know the style of PTO shaft. This, uh, after a little research, I learned is a Walterscheid, uh, and it has what's called a lemon profile. Uh, there's a lobe on the top and just one lobe on the bottom. If you look at it from the end, it's just kind of shaped like a lemon, hence the name. Uh, many of them are a trilobe, so there's three, but there's a number of different types. So you need to know the style, um, and then you need to know the series. And the series is determined by this uh, U-joint that's in the yoke here, uh, also called a cross and bearing. So how do you do that? Well, let me show you. This is a U-joint, and the measurement that you need to take is two. You need to know the diameter of the bearing cap, uh, and then you also need to know the distance from the surface of one bearing cap to the surface of the other. And once you have those measurements, there's some charts that you can look at, and that will tell you what, uh, what sort of guard you're going to need to buy. Okay, so I hook up this PTO shaft uh, to run the thing for the first time, I fire it up, and here's what happens. So as you can see, there's a lot of vibration. Why was that? Was my shaft damaged? Not exactly. I screwed up. As I was backing the tractor back into the garage after my semi-successful attempt to run this thing for the first time, I happened to look down on the floor and I saw this. This is one of the clips that holds the U-joint into the yoke of the PTO shaft. When I took it apart, I loosened it so I could get the measurements um, so I could determine what size uh, guard I was going to need. But apparently, when I put it back in, I didn't get it properly seated. I thought I did, I thought I checked, but hey, that moment of inattention, right? So this popped out, and the very first time I turned the PTO on, what I didn't see, but I did go later back and find, was that this bearing cap blew right out through the side of the PTO shaft, uh, and into the yard. If you look carefully, I think you can see that uh, these have a little oil seal uh, on each one. This one does not. So, although amazingly, all of the uh, needle bearings were still in the uh, bearing cap. I have them all. Uh, there is no oil seal, so, you know, even if I tried to reuse this, the grease would just bleed out from the um, Zerk fitting that goes in that hole right there that I've taken back out. What does that mean? It means it's time for more financial decisions. All right, so having made a little screw up, let's look about where we are financially and what are my options, where am I going to get the best value, and what choices do I want to make? So currently we're at $650 all in, and that includes me using my coupon uh, on the purchase. So I have some options. Uh, I have a 
parts manual and I went through and I found uh, the guard and it sells from Woods uh, as two different halves. Um, that was altogether about, depending on which dealer, the average price was $225 for the two halves. That's not something that really appeals to me. The cross and bearing or that U-joint, again, using that Woods part number from the dealer, that's $55. So if I want that guard and that U-joint, I'm at, you know, that's $280 for that. That really is not viable as far as I'm concerned. So I did, after some searching, find an aftermarket U-joint part number, um, and I could get that for $28. And I found a suitable PTO guard um, that I think was quite adequate, and it was for sale on Amazon at uh, $78. Uh, now, that's a pretty good one. Uh, tractor, uh, Ask Tractor Mike has one on his channel. In fact, he may sell it, I don't know. But So that was going to put me for the aftermarket U-joint and the new Universal Guard, that's a, an additional $104. Well, during all this process, I did a little more shopping, and I found that I could purchase a Vivor drive shaft, the complete unit with the Guard, and that was going to cost $97. So actually cheaper. So that's what I did. Okay, so let's review what I've done. I've bought the brush hog. I've put on a new gearbox. I still have this one that I could possibly rebuild uh, and sell off or have a spare. I've replaced the blades. I've replaced the blade pins and I've replaced the drive shaft. So all in currently I'm at $747. Now I have a heavy duty woods brush bull 10 gauge steel deck with almost no dents in it at all, a little surface rust. Basically the entire drive line is new. Uh, for $747, that's pretty hard to beat for my book. Let me know what you think. Put it in the comments. Do you think I have a good deal going here or I made a mistake? Love to know what your thoughts are. So that's my story so far. I do have two more things that I'm going to add to this. Uh, that's in the works, but I really think that they're just extra things. They're not things that I need. Uh, really, this thing is done. Uh, I probably will put some paint on this once the weather gets warm, just to sort of stop the surface rust. Uh, but, you know, that's just me. I'm a little anal retentive about stuff like that. But, yeah, I'm very happy with this thing. Uh, I'd love to show you now me using it, but we've had a lot of rain. My yard is pretty much a swamp and the grass is only this tall. So I'll fire it up. I'll let you see it run. And uh, you're going to have to wait to see it uh, out really doing what it's meant to do. As always, I appreciate you being with me. Hope we see you next time. Let's fire this thing up. I don't know if you can hear me or not. This microphone doesn't work very well when the tractor's running. But I do have my bypass switch engaged over there, which will let me fire up the PTO while the tractor's running and I'm not in the seat. All right, I'm at idle speed. That's pretty smooth. Bring it up to 540.